Hi, right, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Turn discuss uh, further into the applied project, uh, which is faster going up or coming down video series. And now look at the uh, basic over the solution for question one. In my last video, I went over an overview of the applied project as well as an overview and introduction to question one. And it was, uh, it was a bit time consuming to do uh, the solution for question one as well, so I'll do that. Uh, right now, so I'm just going to jump straight in uh, to this. So make sure you watch my earlier video to get a better idea of the supply project. But basically, uh, the supply project is is trying to ask the question: Does it take longer to uh, reach its maximum height when you throw a ball in the air, or it, does it uh, take longer from the maximum height all the way back down to the ground uh, for the ball to hit hit the ground? So, in question one, was basically setting up that differential equation. And let's just uh, quickly go over question one and then solve it. So a ball with mass m is projected vertically upward from the Earth's surface with a positive initial velocity vo. And again, uh, we assume the forces acting on the ball are the force of gravity and, and the retarding force or backwards force of air, resistance with direction opposite to the direction of motion, and with magnitude p times absolute value of uh, the velocity, v of t, which is a function of the time. So where P is a positive constant and V of T is a velocity of the ball at time T, in both ascent and descent, the total force acting on the ball is minus uh, PV minus MG, or negative PV minus MG. And I explained this in my earlier video on why it's that, so make sure to watch that. And this is just uh, notes left over from there. And it says during ascent, uh, velocity is positive, resistance acts downward. And then during uh, descent, velocity is negative and resistance acts upward. And then there's that uh, force formula right here of, uh, that's acting on it. So uh, force is negative PV minus MG. And by Newton's law, uh, second law of motion, I went over and I stated that basically uh, the total force is equal to mass times acceleration of the ball, in which acceleration is just a derivative of the velocity. Oh, and you can write it in differential notation as dv over dt. And then basically, so m times dv over dt equals negative pv minus mg. That is a differential equation uh, that has both the derivative of velocity and the velocity. And we also know that the initial value of velocity is v0, or, or v at time equals 0 is v of 0. And this is just a simple initial value problem. So make sure you watch my earlier videos on differential equations to get a better idea on this. And then the question asks, solve this above differential equation to show that the velocity is v of t equals to vo plus mg divided by p uh, times it by e to the power of negative pt divided by m minus mg over p. So let's uh, try to solve that. So what we do, write the solution here. So again, what we have is initial value problem. Let's write our differential equation, m dv over dt and equals to negative PV minus MG and we also have and V of 0 equals to V0 or initial velocity V0 or V0 or VO whatever you want to call it. So that's what we have here so first thing we'll do is notice it's a separable equation meaning if we just divide the right side out and then put it to the left we get all the V's on one side and we can move all the T's on the other side. So first what I'm going to do is move this over there and the m as well. So we get dv is equal to, and also take this negative out. We'll have negative pv. I'll take the negative out, so negative pv plus mg. And then the dt goes over there. I'll just put the arrow back there. And also the m, move it over to divide by m. So just get rid of that. So now we have this, and we can take this out and move it over to this side. So what we're left with, but keep the negative just to make it simpler. Um, so, uh, so keep the negative on the right side. So what we end up getting is a dv over pv plus mg. And this equals 2. And then the right side will have negative dt over m. So that's what we have. Move the arrow there. So we have this. We separated all the v's on one side and all the dt's on the other side. So now we'll just take an integral. So the integral of the right side, that's just the, uh, you know, so taking integral of both sides as explained in my differential equations, separable equations video series. Make sure to watch those in the video link below. 
So what we have here now, the integral of dt over m, the negative uh, is just constant, and m is just a constant for the mass, assuming the ball doesn't change uh, mass. So we have, uh, this is just going to be the integral of dt is just t, so t over m. So negative t over m, and then we have to add the constant of integration. We'll call it c2, because of uh, we're going to have another one for the left side, and then we'll call that c1, because it's on the left. So this one, to solve this, well, we're good. we can use substitution. So let u equals, so let's put let u equals 2 pv plus mg, just to make it simpler, so that the differential equals 2 when you take this out. The der derivative here, this is going to be p is constant, and then v, uh, this is dv. So that's the differential of it. And then what we could do is write dv equals 2 du over p so that we could substitute well pv plus mg is u and dv is equal to du over p so what we get now is the integral of dv over pv plus mg is equal to plug in our uh, value so we have 1 over u yeah so 1 over u right here and then the dv becomes du over p but I'll move the p outside the integral because it's just a constant and the integral of 1 over u that's well like uh, 1 over my earlier videos this is just ln of absolute value of u and then plus well c1 is integration constant so what we end up having overall is 1 over p ln and then absolute value of pv just plug in the uh, u which is right here, PV plus MG. PV plus MG plus C1, this is the integration constant. And then this equals to the right side, which is the integral of this, which is negative. So this equals to negative T over M plus C2. So now, before I uh, simplify this further, let's look at this absolute value sign and uh, note, well, uh, basically let's make a note right here. So note, first of all, what we have is we've defined positive uh, going upwards. So V is positive going upwards, and velocity is negative going downwards. So during ascent, or when the ball's moving upwards, we have velocity greater than zero. So that PV plus MG, because again, M P is a positive constant, M and G are all both positive constants right here. That's just acceleration due to gravity. That's mass. And velocity here, since it's greater than zero, this is greater than zero as well. Yeah, so this means that basically the absolute value P plus MG is equal to PV plus MG. And they're both greater than zero during ascent because V is positive. So now when we look at descent, so descent's the interesting one. What we have here the velocity is less than zero. So if the velocity is less than zero, what we end up having is the absolute value of PV plus MG is equal to, well, this is everything else is, is positive constant, so this just equals to a negative P and then put an absolute value, actually the other way around, uh, just take the negative out, so absolute P times absolute value of V plus MG. Actually, yeah, actually, yeah, so that is correct right there, but if we look at, remove that absolute value sign, so PV plus MG, because the velocity is less than zero, this is equal to simply a negative P, absolute value of P, uh, absolute value of V right there, plus MG, or you could just rewrite this as MG minus P times absolute value of, of velocity. And the reason we're doing this is, because, well, it's negative, so this is going to be a negative. So that we're going to have, eventually going to have a PV times a negative. So we'll just put an absolute value of the velocity and then put the negative here because it's already negative. So we have this uh, little notation right there. And when we look at it, the ball is going down because it's uh, ascending, I mean descending. So the forces acting on it are gravity, F of G is equal to MG. And the air resistance is pointing upwards, which is FA which equals two, I'll just move this around here, just move this down here, get some space. This equals two, well, again, like I explained above, um, in the question one, from, especially from my last video, that the force of air resistance is P times absolute value of the velocity. So that's the magnitude of it in the direction opposite of the motion. 
So that's what we have right here. So when it's uh, descending, this is the only two forces acting upon it. If these are the only two forces acting upon it, then what we end up having is, is well, we just have to assume that uh, the force of gravity is greater than or equal to the force of air resistance. And the reason is, and I'll put that here, so assume, put that over here, let's get some room, room, so assume mg is greater than or equal to the absolute value of p times v because, or yeah, because otherwise, because if you think about it, if the air resistance, is, air resistance is greater than the force of gravity, and these are the only two forces acting upon the ball, otherwise the ball will slow down in the air. It will slow down, so it will get slower and slower. And eventually, so this is otherwise if it's greater. Otherwise it will slow down and eventually start floating, which is not practical. Eventually will start floating upwards, which doesn't make any sense. And again, yeah, so put explanation marks again, that wouldn't make sense. So we impose this uh, mg is greater than or equal to PV. And when it's equal to, that's what's called terminal velocity, where the velocity doesn't change, it just keeps being constant. And I'll put that in a bracket. So mg uh, equals to PV, this is terminal velocity. Terminal velocity where it, the ball's not accelerating anymore and that's just the maximum velocity that the ball's gonna be going when it drops down. So that's terminal velocity, so when we assume it's like that, yeah, so if we have that, so for the descending area, mg is greater than p absolute value v, so thus we have mg minus absolute value p times absolute value v, this is greater than or equal to zero because it's like that here. Yeah, so because this is always greater than, and you can also just rearrange, just move it to the left, and, and then you'll have zero there. So that's what we have, and that's this part right here. So what this means is that mg, mg plus uh, PV is uh, equal to the absolute value of uh, of mg plus PV, or we'll do it the other way around, just make it neater, so absolute value of mg plus PV is just equal to uh, mg plus PV or PV plus mg, uh, and this is well because they're both greater than or equal to zero. So this is greater than or equal to zero, no need for the absolute value signs, because that's already an absolute value, and it's not gonna be negative. So that's what it equals to. So then PV plus mg or mg plus PV is the same thing. So what we end up having now is put this all together. Let's zoom in a bit. So let's go all the way back here. So we have this. We could just remove the absolute value sign. So all that was just to explain why we can remove the absolute value sign. So what we end up getting is uh, then we have a 1 over P lawn, and then this is just bracket PV plus MG. So the other way around, same thing equals two, and I'm gonna remove this, I'm gonna move this constant C1 to the other side, and combine it into a constant called C. So this equals negative T over M plus C. And I'll br put a bracket like that, where C is equal to C2 minus C1, which just equals to a constant. Because I just moved the C2 over, and now subtraction of constants, still a constant, because we have C2 on the right side, C1 on the left side, so we, what we have this right here, and before we start solving for V, let's just look at our initial condition of uh, at V of zero, this equals to V zero, so let's plug that in, so we get one over P ln of P V zero plus MG equals to, well, negative, and put a T is zero, this is zero plus C, so this whole thing equals just C. So what we have now is combine these together, we get one over p ln of p v plus m g equals to negative t over m plus well c is just this one over p ln of p v zero plus m g, 
And now what we're going to do is first multiply uh, P on both sides. So we can add P on this side, get, get rid of this one. So what we get is ln, and we're just trying to simplify to solve for, uh, for velocity as a on, by, by itself. So what we get here multiplied by P on both sides, we get negative PT over M, and then P's cancel here, plus ln of PV0 plus MG, like that. And now what we're going to do, because it's ln to get rid of that, we just take both sides as a power, as a power of, I'll just leave this bracket, it's pretty obvious. So put that as a power of E, and same thing over here. Put a bracket here just to make sure that it, just to show that's on everything. So we did that for everything, and then so that using the log property, yeah, or natural log property in this case, uh, e to the lawn of anything, you could bring this inside and remove this E and lawn. Make sure to watch my early videos on on uh, power functions and their properties, as well as uh, my other one, natural log properties videos in the video link below to get a better idea. So this just equals to PV plus MG. So that's the property of this natural log. And in this case here, this equals to E to the, so we're gonna use power function property. And then, uh, yeah, make sure to watch my logarithmic property videos as well, that's what I meant. So E to the power of T, whenever you have a power with an addition, you could multiply these out and remove the, the uh, or yeah, multiply it out with the same base. So this is the same thing as writing E to the power of PT divided by M times E to the power of ln PV0 plus MG. And now what we could do is, well, there's another log property we can add to it and move this MG on the other side. So subtract MG, so we have PV equals to E to the PT over M times it by now, we get PV0 plus MG subtracted by MG, all subtracted by MG. So we got rid of this E to ln from there, so we have this, and now we'll just divide V on both sides and we finally get our V of T is equal to, when you divide on both sides, this P cancels and we'll have this MG. I'll move that bracket in front because that's how the uh, question one asks us to solve it. So we get V0 because the P's cancel. MG over P, because we divide it by P, times it by E to the negative PT over M. Put this uh, neater. And then minus, then we divide by P, so we have mg over P. Let's write this a bit neater. So we have mg over P, and there's our answer. And this should be exactly what the question one asked us. So v, v0 plus mg divided by P, e to the negative PT divided by M minus mg over P. Let's see if we get that over here. Let's see what is asked to find. So there is what asked to find v of t equals to v0 plus mg over P e to the negative pt divided by m minus mg uh, p, which is, well, exactly the same here. Let's put a check mark. So that is, uh, yeah, that's just the right answer, exactly what we have. So anyways, that's all for today. If we learned from this pretty extensive uh, example uh, question one video on this applied project, and uh, uh, most of the time was spent on just showing why you can remove that absolute value sign. And also uh, make sure, uh, yeah, hopefully you learn from this. It's all for today. And again, make sure to watch my earlier videos in the video link below on uh, useful stuff such as the uh, logarithmic and power function property, properties, which I used in this video, and the differential equations uh, concepts as well, which I uh, went over as well. Anyways, it's all for today. If you learned, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.